Phil Collins on BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. You are with Marion here uh, for your Sunday afternoon. Now, we're just a couple of days away from the biggest meeting in the flat racing calendar at Royal Ascot. And you don't have to travel all the way to enjoy it, actually, which is quite refreshing if you've ever done it. I don't know, I've done it a couple of times with the girls. It's the journey back that's a pain, actually, because it's really long. And um, once you've had a few drinks, you stop in the whole time to find toilets. So, you know, the fact that pubs, hotels, restaurants across Coventry and Warwickshire are putting on their own events, um, it really works for someone like me. Uh, one of them, though, is at the Star and Garter in Leamington, and it's all in aid of Lamb Action. Now, Pinky is the organiser who's been inspired to put this event together by her friend Helen. Um, pleasure to welcome you into the studio, Pinky, and Hello. also your friend Helen, who I wasn't expecting until <laughs> quite, quite a little, you know, quite not so long ago. So it's absolutely fantastic to meet you both and to see why, why you're doing this. So, so Pinky, why were you compelled to do this? Um, well, for the last... Four years we've been going to Ascot with Helen and um, I thought, well, actually, Helen can't go to Ascot this year. It's just, it's getting harder and harder to get there. So we thought Ascot can come to us. So, um, and also to raise money for Lamb Action um, and create uh, awareness. And what is Lamb Action? Lamb Action uh, is a charity that uh, is close to Helen's heart and, and to all of us that are friends with Helen. Um, Helen can probably tell a little bit more about Lamb. Action, can't you, Helen? <laughs> I can, yeah. Lamb Action is a charity for patients who suffer with the disease lymphangiolia myomatosis. It's predominantly a disease that uh, affects women of childbearing years. And when I was first diagnosed six years ago, Lamb Action were absolutely fantastic. And they're a very small charity because obviously it's a, such a rare disease. And they just looked after me and helped me through the first few years of diagnosis. What so, is it? What is it? What is it? Is yeah. it? It's a charity. No, sorry, the um, the, the the disease itself. Oh, fair, what is it? Fair question. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a disease that predominantly affects the lungs. It can affect the kidneys and various other various other parts of the body, but predominantly it's the lungs. And it's cysts that grow in the lungs and take up spaces of the lung tissue, so you can't absorb the oxygen as you breathe in. The oxygen doesn't then get to the rest of your body, so you get progressively more and more breathless. Um, it generally occurs, you, you first are diagnosed once you've had a lung collapse and then the doctors start to think, oh, what's caused this um, in this otherwise healthy young person? And uh, women tend to, who have had a lung collapse, go on and have more and more and more lung collapses. Did you have any idea that you were kind of in line for this condition? No, I was, I was playing netball and my lung collapsed. Gosh. And uh, I'd been pr getting progressively more breathless, thinking, hang on, I should be getting fitter, not, not worse. And then my lung collapsed and I carried on playing, but coughing a lot <laughs> and then went to hospital. You got to support the girls, <laughs> haven't you? I couldn't lose. No. Once you got to hospital, what then? Um, I was there for quite a few hours because they could see that I, they x-rayed me and could see I had something going on in my lungs, which was a very, very scary moment because they said I had lots of shadows on my lungs, which really thought, I thought, oh God, what, what's, what's all this? Um, but I had to have my lung drained because it had collapsed, so I stayed in hospital. And they drained my drained my lung, which probably was one of the worst experiences of my life. It was very painful. Um, went home, was put in touch with a consultant, saw a consultant a couple of weeks ago, in between having a, a scan, and uh, saw my consultant, and he said I had this horrendous disease, which just completely threw my husband and I. We weren't expecting that, really. Um, I thought maybe it was something that would be treatable. But uh, unfortunately, there's no treatment for lamb. So what's so. your prognosis? Originally, I was told I had five years, but that was six years ago. And I'm still relatively healthy. I'm on oxygen now, but uh, that gives me a better quality of life. So I, I walk around with my oxygen. And I know people who've had it for 20 years. So the only treatment currently is a... Uh, lung transplant at end stage but research and that's why I'm so heavily involved in lamb action research has come up with all sorts of different thoughts and theories to what causes lamb and therefore what maybe can treat it so I'm currently on a drug called rapamycin which seems to be slowing the progression down so prognosis wise who knows who knows and like you say you're very optimistic because you've met people through lamb that say here I am 20 years later. Absolutely, yeah. And how many people have this disease? Uh, in the UK, you, there's probably about two or three per million. So it, it, it is a very, very rare disease. Um, it, it's, it's being diagnosed 
slightly more often now purely because of the research and the awareness that people like Pinky and other people are creating. So doctors, even doctors, when I was first diagnosed, I had no idea what it was. That's quite scary, isn't it? Because you go to them for the answers. Absolutely. My GP had never heard of it. What did you do? Did you research? Did you spend hours looking into it? Yeah, that's probably one of the worst things you can do. Yeah. <laughs> you become a doctor yourself then, right? <laughs> well, you... you, you, you uh, the way your mind is working you're very low at the time and being told you've got five years you're thinking oh god so you look at all the worst case scenarios and it's probably one of the worst things to do is to to, to google it you mentioned uh, childbearing age uh, do you have children i do thankfully i had children i was told when i was diagnosed not to have any more right but now with advancement i do know a couple of lamb patients who've actually gone and had children not without problems, um, plenty of uh, hospital stays during their time, but they have gone on and had children. That network must be just incredible and, and a, a really a good reason for why not to have a shindig and, and raise some much needed awareness and funds for, for the cause. Yeah, I mean, we're really excited about Ascot Day. We've sold about 80 tickets, uh, which we never anticipated. Uh, we've got another 20 left. But ultimately, um, my my goal was to raise awareness, and also we thought we'd raise about five hundred pounds, but we've nearly raised two thousand five hundred. So without the day even happening, yeah. So yeah, so um, it's going to be a good day. Basic, the races are coming to us. Um, we've got lives, we've got big screens. We've got um, runners to place the bets, so we don't even have to leave. I love um, that. Anyway, <laughs> go <laughs> so, fetch me my slip, please. That's right. Yeah, enjoy. <laughs> enjoy yeah. And it's at the Star and Garter. So what's the setup there? Do they have a marquee? Do they have? Is it within the building itself? Or uh, well, Star and Garter is our is our local kind of um, pub as a uh, gastro pub, and it's going to be um indoors so even if the weather's not good um we'll, we'll all be indoors there's going to be screens food fizz um what sort of food because it's going to be posh stuff in it, it you're is not it? talking you no know, we're not talking there uh, you know sausage rolls. And no no, no. So, what it's, you got? Um, i think we've got we've, all, we've got a gourmet buffet yeah um yeah. which is going to be and then in the evening we've got um canapes again uh so it's going to be a good day so and live music. Fizz, yeah, fizz, fizz as well. Fizz on arrival, uh, live music. Um, Tell us who's playing because he's a local chap and he's fantastic. Yes, I don't know if you ever, anybody's ever heard him play. It's Tom Kirkpatrick. He's a one man band and I've uh, seen him play quite a few times. Um, and he's doing us um, a very good rate, which so uh, <laughs> we say thanks to Tom. And we've got a local girl called Sinead singing and a new uh, young artist that's going to probably come and um, p play for us. Her name is Bronte. Oh, okay. um she's uh very good very good and um, i've certainly seen tom and what he does is he takes songs that you know and he goes right this is my spin and i'm going to play the drums on it yes the uh, guitar right. the keyboard and you're like how can this man do it and just to watch him it, it's just in awe isn't it absolutely in awe he's when brilliant he yeah and, and and he's always coming up with new material so yeah. um yeah. i'm sure he'll do well on the day for and he us. fills the dance floor you That's know like right. some bands come along people just watch them and stuff he absolutely i went to a rugby club gig recently the guys come in and told me about their event we went and we couldn't believe it the amount of rugby lads on the floor to this lad playing all these instruments it was brilliant but um also best dress gets a prize That's right. We were going like to have, yeah, we were just going to have a best dressed lady, but then we thought that's a bit, 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 bit unfair. So we've got breast gent as well. Yeah. So um, for those gents that are coming along, they need to kind of, you know, step show, it up step a it little up. bit. Yeah, yeah. That's and right. something about a charity balloon release and also balloon release and also theme cocktails, I believe. Yeah, the theme cocktails. We I haven't got involved in that. We're going to let um, the Matt, the manager from the Star and Garter, organise those. The balloon release again is another way of to create awareness. It's going to be in lamb colours, uh, which is uh, purple and lime and we'll release the balloons and if anybody finds one that balloon uh you can have a meal for four um if you find the balloon well it looks like a lovely restaurant so i'm going to be out looking for those <laughs> <balloons>. <laughs> right, yeah. uh, what does it mean to you that that your mate pinky oh, has it, done this for it you it just it just means the world she's incredibly supportive and very understanding you know when i get tired we're going out we'll, we'll it's great because she's quite happy to sit in one pub with me <laughs> and not go everywhere so yeah it's just great she really wants to help create awareness and help to raise some money for a, a charity that is just fantastic what's really refreshing is your approach to it and you know it's absolute pleasure to meet you. and we, we hope that people get in touch because you've still got tickets right yeah we've got about 20 tickets left um uh, and i think they'll pretty much will go but if you're really interested either give the star guard a call or um I i've think, got your details yeah. if anyone wants to call rather Definitely. than yeah because it's it's tricky isn't it to explain yeah. the details and stuff and give out numbers but i've got the phone number for pinky i've got her email and the star and garter as well like uh, pinky's saying there we'll uh, we'll give you the details but just getting quick because it sounds like it's going to 
be amazing. It sounds like it's going to be um, a lot of fun and, and very popular as well. Yeah, and, well, it, and we're going to do it every year because uh, the, the success on it has been so f- so good. Uptake so already, yeah, already. Yeah, they want so, it, don't they? Yeah, 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 lovely. Well, we wish you all the very best. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you.